Hi, my name is Kyle Truman. I'm one of the elders here at Hope Fellowship in Gatesville. And here at Hope Fellowship, we want to do everything we can to help people grow closer to God. And we do that over and over again for people from all types of backgrounds. I want to take some time today, and uh, in addition to a few videos in the future, to share about some things I've been learning lately. On uh, Tuesday, July 29th, I opened an email. It was an email that was forwarded to me by an old friend, someone I hadn't talked to in quite some time. In this email, I learned about House Bill 158 that is currently in the North Carolina General Assembly. This bill is a very simple, direct, and to-the-point bill that would abolish and criminalize abortion. I read this, and I had never heard of anything like this. I was accustomed to bills ab uh, regulating abortion, but not abolishing it. And besides, I thought that abortion couldn't be outlawed because of the 1973 Supreme Court case that we know as Roe versus Wade. So this email just kind of wrecked me uh, internally, and it launched me into about three hours of research I did that day. I completely changed my plans for the day, and I just went in digging to learn more about what what I had read in the email. And what I learned uh, made me so happy, but it also upset me greatly. It made me happy because I learned since 2019, four, five states, Oklahoma, Texas, Idaho, Indiana, and Arizona had had bills introduced into the, uh, to the uh, legislative branch of the state governments to, to abolish abortion. But in none of these states, they were signed, not signed into law. But still, I got so excited because there's an effort being made, and I didn't know that that was happening. But then I got angry. I got angry because I learned that pro-life leaders and some pro-life leaders, not all by any means, but some pro-life leaders and some pro-life organizations and pro-life politicians did not support these bills. And in many cases... Certain pro-life organizations and certain pro-life leaders even worked hard to kill these bills. I was under the impression that the Republican Party was pro-life. And I also assumed that all pro-life organizations wanted abortion to come to an end. Well, I was wrong. For me, pro-life means that abortion is murder. It's wrong. God says don't murder. And because of that, our laws should... Uh, be in agreement, and abortion should be outlawed. I got angry because for many politicians and organizations, pro-life means something very different to them than what it does to me. Something more than this type of pro-life that I learned about, where they kill bills that would abolish abortion, something more than that type of pro-life is needed. So, pro-life leaders and organizations and politicians didn't support these bills to abolish abortion, and they, they sought to kill these bills. I want to give you one example. A congressman in the Texas legislature named Jeff Leach killed a bill called House Bill 896. It was filed in early 2019. This bill would have completely outlawed legal abortion in Texas. It would have followed the Constitution, and it would have ignored and challenged the unconstitutional and the evil opinion of Roe v. Wade. So the Speaker of the House in Texas put this bill in Jeff Leach's committee. And Jeff Leach, who is a Republican who identifies as pro-life, did not allow the bill to go to vote. Kind of strange. Truth is, Jeff Leach has authored and supported over a dozen bills that regulate abortion and defund abortion providers in his state. And Jeff Leach uh, claims to be pro-life, even a pro-life champion. Later on, after he killed that bill uh, in early 2019, later on in the year, he authored the Born Alive Infant Protection Act that requires physicians to work to save the life of a baby who survives an abortion. But the truth is, this was already a law in the state. This was already how things were supposed to be done. So the Texas Alliance for Life praised Representative Leach as a pro-life champion. He killed a bill that would have abolished legal abortion. And then he was proclaimed a pro-life champion for writing a bill 
and seeing it through to its passing that would have outlawed something that was already illegal. You all, this is just political hypocrisy at its worst. It is how some people who claim to be pro-life work to be to end abortion. And it makes me sick. I realize that this one example and, and the things I, I, I've shared with you so far does not characterize many godly pro-life people and it does not characterize all organizations and politicians who claim to be pro-life. I also realize that there are many people that love Jesus and hate murder that are not aware of this information. That was me before I read the email on July 29th. Now that I know these things, I see the need for something more than the current pro-life efforts that are popular today, that I used to be very content with. We need different goals and different methods need to be employed than what's commonly employed by the pro-life movement. I've had to stop thinking according to the terms and methods of the pro-life movement, and I've begun to think in terms put forth in a movement known as abolitionism. From what I understand, most pro-life efforts merely seek to regulate abortion. And this goal falls far short of what God requires in his word. God wants something more. What I've realized these past few weeks is that we must go further than just saving some babies and regulating abortion. We need to work toward giving all preborn people the opportunity to live their lives by passing legislation that would outlaw and criminalize legal abortion. Instead of merely lopping off branches of the abortion tree through our countless attempts to regulate it, we should take an axe to the tree, cut the thing down, and then call someone in with a stump grinder to make sure that the tree never grows back. I'm about a month into this journey, and I want you to look in to what's become known as abolitionism. I'll put a link to a number of resources, number of websites in the show notes below, and I'll also be producing a few more videos in the next few weeks. Thank you.